familiar with the new gesture controls on the iPhone 10. This is all new to iPhone users, so we don't have a home button like we've always had in the past. So it's going to take a lot of getting used to. There's a little bit of a learning curve for the gestures on the iPhone 10, so you need to get familiar with those gestures. So of course the first one's going to be the control center. So you swipe down from the top right corner to get to the control center. You can see that's where you also see your battery percentage and other things that you don't see in the status bar right away. And to get to the app switcher, just go down to the bottom left corner and kind of just flick up a little bit and hold. So you may sometimes you have to hold, sometimes you don't. It just kind of depends on where you get your finger. But if you swipe up from anywhere and hold, you will get to the app switcher right there. If you're coming from an older device as well, you may not know how to take screenshots. All you have to do is hold the power and the volume up button and that will take a screenshot for you. And also to go in and out of applications, you can just go ahead and swipe over from the left. Just a quick little slide over and it'll take you to that next application. It's really, really nice, really convenient and a quick way to get in and out of certain applications. Now I will have a full video showing all of the gestures and basically all the basic actions for the iPhone 10. So if you want to see that, make sure to check the cards in the description below. Because once again, there is a little bit of a learning curve with the iPhone 10, even coming from the latest iPhone before this. So the second thing you should do after getting your iPhone 10 is configure or set up Face ID. So let's go into our settings and go down to Face ID and Passcode. Put in your passcode if you have one. And then you want to make sure to select what you want to use Face ID for. Or if you never set it up in the initial setup process, make sure to set it up right here. Now you also want to pay attention to the require attention for Face ID. Make sure to check those off if you want. Make sure to read those and see if that's something you would like. So definitely go in here and configure some of these settings for Face ID. And then of course, if you didn't get a good scan the first time, you can go ahead and reset the Face ID right there, just so your device unlocks quicker and easier every single time. The third thing is to tweak your display settings. So let's go ahead to display and brightness. And the first option you'll be presented with, of course, is True Tone. Now this, I would recommend you keep on, but you can turn it off and on and see which one you prefer. I don't like the blue tint. I like the True Tone feature, which was introduced with the new iPhone 8, but you can go ahead and mess around with this and see what you like, but I'd recommend you keep True Tone on. I also personally like to turn Auto Lock to Never, just because I never forget to lock my device. And when I'm doing things, sometimes I'll be away from my phone and I don't want to go back and have to unlock it time and time again. So I like to keep auto lock on never always. Race to wake is also a feature in here, but I would not recommend this on the iPhone 10 just because you can simply tap the screen on the iPhone 10 to wake the device. So there's really no need for race to wake. And then if we go back and go to general accessibility and display accommodations, this is where you can go ahead and turn on or off auto brightness, whatever you prefer. I prefer it off, but some people do prefer it on. So yeah, I would just go through and tweak the display settings to your liking. Next up is tweaking the control center, which of course you get to by swapping down from the right. You can see there's a lot of room down here so we can fit some more icons in there if we want to. So let's go to customize controls. So I personally like having my alarm there so I'm going to add the alarm. I like having my flashlight right there. You can basically just move these around to where you want them to be and add in whatever you want to be in there. And since you have a lot more room with the control center here on the iPhone 10, there's really no reason not to fill it all the way up. Unless of course you think it could look cluttered but that's just up to you. I would just go in and customize the control center to your liking just because you can. And then also in control center of course if you didn't know you can 3D touch on all of these toggles and get more settings, more functionality out of these toggles. So definitely go ahead and check that out. The fifth thing you should do after getting your brand new iPhone 10 is sending some an emojis. So an emojis are exclusive to the iPhone 10. However, anybody with an iPhone can see the an emoji. So if you don't know, an emojis are basically just a mask on your face and it basically just mimics your face, like the mouth movements and everything. And it makes you look like an emoji. It's pretty crazy. It's kind of creepy too, uh, but it's really fun to play around with. And again, since it is exclusive to the iPhone 10, it's really cool because not all your friends have it. So let's go ahead and tap to start. And you can see right here, it's picking up my face and it's seeing me talk. Right, so you can see it's picking up my movement on my face right now. It's talking like I'm talking. So I'm just going to go and click on record. And you can see we have 10 seconds to record as much as we want. So you can kind of just mess around, raise your eyebrows, and it knows when you're doing that. It's pretty creepy, but pretty funny. We have 10 seconds to record as much as we want. So you can kind of just mess around. And you can hear it did pick up my voice as well. So it's pretty cool. You can go through all these different emojis. Again, it is pretty creepy, but it's pretty fun as well. It's fun to play around with. And again, people that don't even have an iPhone 10 can see the an emojis. The next thing you want to do when you get your iPhone 10 is change the camera format. So let's go down to our camera settings, formats. And we want to change this to high efficiency. And this is going to capture photos and videos in the HEVC format instead of the JPEG and H.264. So basically what this is going to do is give you the same quality but just reduce the space that it takes. So there's really no reason not to do this. And again, it's really important that you do this first, you know, before you get into taking a lot of pictures and videos because you cannot change this once you've already taken pictures and videos in the other format. So definitely change this to high efficiency. You're going to save some space on your device. You should also download some AR applications to take advantage of AR kit on the iPhone 10, which of course is even more powerful than the iPhone 8. So you can go into the app store right here. If you go to apps and you scroll down, top categories, AR apps should be right there. And you can find a ton of AR applications to take full advantage of AR kit. Really, really cool stuff. Augmented reality is definitely the future. And it's really fun to play around with some of these apps, especially apps like Ikea Place. There's another app called AR Zombie, which is really fun. I also have an application called Lightspace.